Tizzy Homestead. How's that, Gargan? Sorry, this is getting up late. Uh, we had a, over the weekend, we had some bad storms come through. We got a telephone pole hit by lightning. I mean, it was a direct hit. I'm just turning that thing into a pile of toothpicks. But it yanked down wires, blew transformers. Even was hit into the phone lines. You know, if you had uh, hardwired phones in your house, those little gray boxes they put on the side of the house, it was blowing them off the sides of the houses. So needless to say, there was nothing going up on the internet for the past few days. Getting it up today, there we go. Let's talk about uh, Tom McDonald. I put a couple of his videos in the description link, and, uh, you know, some folks watched them, some folks didn't. It's worth going and watching those videos. Uh, he's an independent, and I know it's a wrap. But as the uh, blacks that have been reviewing these and, and circulating out there in the black community, he is quickly becoming a favorite rapper. They love that, black, that rap music, and he puts truth into it, as they call spitting truth. A lot of truth in those songs. A lot of truth. Divide and conquer. That's what he's warning people about. You're being divided up into little boxes so that they can control you. I even love the one where he's talking about the slavery and how they learned they didn't need chains anymore to control you. They give you a little screen to stick in front of your face. And through media and so forth, they control you that way. You think you're free. You just can't see the cage. Very much true. So if you haven't, if you didn't watch those things, you might go back and do it. Uh, a lot of truth in those two songs. And it explains exactly what's going on in this country. We have been divided. And they work very hard dividing us. And taking away our culture. And when I'm saying taking away our culture, I'm talking about our patriot, our national culture. What it is to be an American. Ooh, all those guys founding fathers, they were bad men. No, they weren't. Um... Uh, they weren't perfect men, but you also have to put their actions in context with their times. Not not out of line for the rest of the world at that point in time. A little bit revolutionary. I get a kick out of it that people, you know, they run around talking about, oh, we need to try socialism. We tried socialism, but failed. Look at your history. If you know your history, you know that socialism didn't work. How about anarchy, where we have no government rule? Yeah, we tried that too. Yeah, minimal rule. Virtually not much, no government really in control of you. And um, that didn't work either. Uh, they looked at communism and so forth. That never has worked anywhere. You always have somebody show up with a gun and take control of it, which is what ends up happening with socialism too. Somebody shows up with a gun and says, I'm the new boss. Case in point, look out in Seattle. The Chaz chop thing, how long did that last before somebody showed up with guns and took control <laughs> and started killing people? That happens on national levels, too, just about every time, you know, till the people finally learn, if I open my mouth, they're going to execute me. So let me be quiet now. Understand that most of these forms of government that you kids have been having your heads pumped full of out in those colleges has been tried in this country. It's not like just foreign countries. It's been tried here. And our founding fathers, being some very bright men, came up with a pretty good system that the whole world sat back in amazement as this country just rose to power. That people could self-govern themselves. Now, we don't self-govern ourselves anymore. We now have pretty much a totalitarian fascist regime that is controlling this country. These facts. They don't even pass laws anymore. They write edicts. Oh, you can't go outside. you got to wear 45 masks and put a trash bag over your head and so forth. And they're playing this pandemic for everything it's worth. I find it to be absolutely humorous, you know. And Democrats are running around saying, oh, we were doing such a great job with this. Yeah, you were. Yeah, yeah. That's why most of the deaths was in your states, right? How about bright move Ocoma was pulling with throwing people with, uh, with the virus in the nursing homes? Yeah, that was real bright, wasn't it? And now he's trying to hide it. That man needs to be put in jail for what he did. Had hospital ships sitting there empty. So it was not like he was lacking hospital beds to put these people in. Okay. So save his crap. It's almost like he intended to get rid of a bunch of old folks he didn't have to deal with anymore. But will he ever go on trial? Oh, gosh, no. You know, we don't try Democrats. Come on. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I was kind of curious. I uh, haven't heard of any more impeachments on Donald Trump this past month. 
What's wrong with you Democrats? Come on, you gotta find something to try to impeach him on. Don't you guys have impeachments going all the time for him? Why don't you try impeaching Nancy Pelosi? There you go. That'd be a good one. Uh, she's incited, made calls to incite violence. Uh, what is it, Maxine Waters? Waters? Whatever the heck her name is. Chick out of California that don't even live in her congressional district, and you guys let her slide by on that crap? She incited people to violence. Eh? Far worse than the president did on the nonsense. I'll just be glad when we finally get this election mess straightened out and can actually elect the president. Or the people can elect the president. Not mainstream media and the Democratic Party. And the big businesses who want to go back to Red China. Sad. Y'all are sad. Sad! Anyway, not to let this go too awfully, awfully long. When the people fear their government, that's tyranny. Your governments become tyrannical if you're if you're fearful of it. When the government fears the people, ah, that's liberty. That's what your founding fathers thought. Are we free and living in liberty, or are we under a fascist, totalitarian regime that has become tyrannical? Never before have we ever had a sitting president write as many executive orders as Joe Biden has. His own party wants to take away his total access to that uh, launching nuclear weapons. They know the old bird senile. They're just afraid that they're all going to be sitting around in the office when he goes, what's this button do? You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think it couldn't happen either. Every day he opens his eyes, he wonders where the heck he's at. He's not even sure he's on the same planet. But he's the most popular, popular president ever elected in the United States. The most popular. Got more votes than uh, Obama got. John F. Kennedy. All of them. Yeah, amazing, isn't it? I didn't know he was so popular. Yeah, uh, I, I just don't understand how his speeches and his televised events and so forth, especially the ones they put out here on YouTube, they end up with more down votes than up votes. Viewership's nowhere to speak of. Uh, you know, I used to watch the press conferences out of the White House, and anymore I don't. It's just a joke. I'll circle back with you on that. I'll circle back with you on that. That girl, she has, and, and I noticed where she tried, I guess, to emulate our last press secretary and brought a notebook in and was flipping through it trying to find an answer to a fairly simple question a reporter asked. And she about tore that notebook apart and couldn't get the answer. <laughs> I think they prepped that poor girl about three minutes before she has to walk up to the mic. Poor child, I feel sorry for her in a way. I finally put watch though, because it was like, there's no real information going on here. Uh, I, and I just don't understand why CNN and MSNBC and stuff don't talk shit to her like they did to, uh, uh, you know, the press secretary for Trump. They were forever up her butt. <laughs> of course, they finally backed off of that a little bit because she'd take that book of hers, open it up, and smack him upside the head with it using their own quotes. Love that girl. <laughs> so, but this girl that Biden's got in there, <sighs> of course, you know, I think if the girl ever sat and told the truth, she goes, listen, I don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. <laughs> Relax. You know, the American public sitting there, they're talking about, oh, we didn't have any vaccine when we took office. Really? You had millions and millions of doses. What are you talking about? How did you pass out all them doses if you didn't have any vaccines? Well, there was no stockpiles. No, Trump, when they saw that the drug manufacturers had caught up, they released the reserves they had. No reason to hang on to them because the companies was up in manufacturing, getting the stuff out. Had no distribution. I read the CDC stuff on the distribution, and it was put out in September. Where were you all at? Didn't you? Don't you? Don't you read the stuff from the CDC? So much for following the experts' advice, huh? Liars. The lot of them. Total and complete liars. We didn't have this. This wasn't in place. This yada yada yada. And, and you, you find the records out there of where this stuff was put into place months before the elections even. But they're, they're counting on, and this is what the Democrats truly count on. 
they count on, and that's why they need stuff like absentee voting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mail-in ballots. Stuff of this nature. Because they want you to be able to sit at home drinking your beer. Because uh, they know that it's not... Doesn't mean anything to you because you really don't follow politics. Okay? Just drink your beer. Sign here. Throw it in the mailbox or we'll have somebody stop by and help you fill it out. They call that low information voters. Sorry, but that's what they're called. Tag. Most of the Democrats, that's where they're at. If you're not out checking all the different news sources, things of this nature, you're a low information voter because you're only getting one side of the story. And trust me, if you're mainly getting everything, and I don't care if you believe in the left and all this kind of stuff, you want to find out what the other guys are saying, and you're not going to find that on Twitter. Matter of fact, there's becoming fewer and fewer conservatives on Twitter. I closed my accounts out and have never looked back again and don't ever plan to. I like Parler, you know, because uh, usually, you know, it's, it's more, it's actually a more friendly system. You'll find people not in there screaming at each other like a bunch of idiots or doing stupid stuff. There's some good memes come up, but, you know, stuff of that nature. Keep in mind, America, take a look at those videos again if you didn't get a chance to. Tom McDonald's stuff is very good. The biggest thing is, is the black community is beginning to look at that and go, you know, the man is telling the truth. They've divided us by race. So that we don't unite and become Americans. Because if we ever unite and become Americans, <laughs> well, ask King George about it. That doesn't work real good. And then the last thing I want to put out there is these kids that are running your government right now, they were the hippies back in the 60s. Yeah. Yeah. These guys were coming back from overseas. You know, they were like on the Golden Gate Bridge dumping rotten garbage on them. Airports that throw rotted food and vegetables and spit on them. And yeah, that's that's how much they thought of the American troops. They, they had, Their opinion hasn't changed. How long did it take old Joe Biden to get some more American troops being shot at? Not long, huh? No, it's a favorite pastime. Keep that in, that industrial complex wheels turning. We need to make more bolts, guns, bombs. This country needs to be put into the confines of the Constitution and the Constitution and make these cowardly assholes that are sitting in Washington, D.C. declare a war before committing troops. We were never set up for this. Our founding fathers didn't want us being the policemen of the world. They wanted us to be the friends of the world, to engage in trade with the world. That's the reason they put in that Constitution the way that we commit troops to a war. You invade our shores, the president has the authority to go to war with you immediately. Then talk to Congress. To go into a foreign country with troops, eh, well, we need to declare a war. I looked all through that Constitution. I cannot find where that was ever amended. Supreme law of the land? I don't think so. Hasn't been one. That for God knows how long. Needs to become now. Somebody needs to hand them that little bitty book and say, if it isn't in here, you don't do it, okay? Because anything not listed in here is your authority to do, you don't do it. That's left up to the states. Keep that in mind. You're being toyed with. <laughs> <laughs> oh, America, stand up. There was no riot in the Capitol. There was a few people that walked in through the doors after the police removed barricades and everything else to lure them in. I don't know what that whole story is yet. It's going to be found out sooner or later. But it's usually after everybody's gone and no longer in public light that you find out that what they did. It's sad. It's disgusting. And let me tell you, Nancy Pelosi, what a riot looks like. They, they kill a lot of people and they burn places down. I didn't see any fires in the Capitol building. Didn't see a lot of bodies laying around but one, and that was done by your security personnel. Other than two people that had a heart attack, and I think there was one girl that they said was trampled, but I can't find any more information on it. That was in those initial reports. We all know how those initial reports turned out. A bunch of BS. So, I'm sorry. I'm not buying it anymore. There was no trying to take over the Capitol building. They were in there taking selfies. That doesn't tell me that they were trying to take over. 
And it was too much of a party atmosphere. It makes me wonder what they were doing there to start with. But you're trying to make it all, all for all it's worth. Uh, I just wish the National Guard would have a little sense, step outside the fence, and then lock the gate behind them and explain to them, no, we're going to keep you animals caged, okay? They carry on uh, where the senators and so forth that was uh, trying to dispute the, the counts. Well, I'll tell you what, if there wasn't reasons to dispute the counts in any election, this one was it. But 2016, Democrats did the same thing. But nobody was trying to throw them into Gitmo or run them out of Dodge or throw them out of the Senate and the House and so forth because they, they wanted to decertify those states. It's okay for the Democrats, just not okay for conservatives. Say so it's all right for the ruling class, just not for you other folks. America, land of the free, home of the brave, huh? <laughs> it's rich as the homes did. Oh, I forgot one thing. Let me throw that in there. Your government finally decided, guess what? That if you're a veteran or an ex-police officer, you are a white supremacist. I wonder how the brothers feel about that that came out of the military. I suddenly looked in the mirror going, I'm a white supremacist, huh? <laughs> yeah. So that right there tells you what the government, this nation, thinks of veterans. Yeah, they do. Love us, don't they? Yeah, they do. <clears throat> and until they show their true colors, they'll burn a flag in front of you and spit on the graves of your fallen comrades and call you a terrorist. Uh, that was Barack Obama's time. Was the you know mil the veterans were you know would be homegrown terrorists. The threat of freedom is holding offices in Washington D.C. Understand that, America. It's not the people out here that's the threat. It's the ones inside that beltway. They're the ones taking away your freedom. Keep that in mind. It's Rich, does the homestead. Love you guys. Appreciate you. Hope you're going to have a great week. Lord, we already missed a day of it. Now take care.